Hello everybody and welcome to Edupedia World. I am Mansi Garg and we'll be studying geography today. The topic that we'll be covering today is the earth as a planet. Well, you all know that the earth as a planet is a round object in space that moves around the sun, which is a star, and receives light from it. The planets do not have a light of their own. They move around their stars in fixed paths called orbits. Well, Earth is an oblate spheroid. The Earth is said to be spherical, but it is not a perfect sphere. The true shape of the Earth is an oblate spheroid, but from space it looks like a perfect sphere. The diameter of the earth varies at the equator and at the poles. The diameter at the equator is 12,756 kilometers while the polar diameter of the earth is 12,713 kilometers. This difference in diameter is due to the centrifugal force of earth's rotation at a great speed which forms a bulge at the equator and compression at the poles. Thus, this Earth is said to be as an oblate spheroid. Our Earth is the only planet that supports life. Unlike other planets, it is covered with green vegetation, enormous blue-green oceans containing over a million of islands, a large number of streams and rivers, huge land masses called continents, mountains, ice caps and deserts. Some form of life thrives virtually in every part of the earth from the coldest part of the poles to the warmest part of the equator. Earth has certain features that makes it habitable and thus a unique planet. Well, let us cover some of those features which makes it a unique planet. The first being its distance from the sun and its temperature. The earth is at an optimum distance from the sun. Hence, it is neither too hot nor too cold. The distance between the earth and the sun makes life possible on earth. If it was closer to the sun, any life present would get burnt from too much heat of the sun. If it was farther from the sun, life would freeze because of lack of heat. Well, coming on to temperature. The earth is the third planet from the sun and has an average temperature of 17 degrees Celsius, which is suitable for life to exist. If the average temperature on the Earth's surface changes by only a few degrees, many species would perish due to extreme heat or cold. The other two terrestrial planets, Mercury and Venus, are very hot, with maximum temperatures of more than 400 degrees Celsius. The remaining planets in the solar system are very cold with surface temperatures below 0 degrees Celsius. Venus is the second planet from the sun, but it is hotter than Mercury. This is because the atmosphere around Venus is mainly composed of carbon dioxide, the carbon dioxide produces greenhouse effect on the surface of Venus. Thus, the temperature on its surface remains very high. The Earth's atmosphere contains a very small quantity of carbon dioxide as compared to it. Now, let us discuss the second factor of the Earth which makes it unique, which is the atmosphere of Earth. The atmosphere is a thin layer of air around the earth. It is a mixture of gases like nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, helium and argon and many other gases. Well, as you can see on your screens, nitrogen constitutes about 78% of the total, oxygen 21%, carbon dioxide, water vapor and other gases like helium and argon approximately constitute about 1%. The atmosphere is divided into many layers, mainly five. The troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, ionosphere and the thermosphere. The troposphere is where all weather changes take place. The stratosphere is where the aircraft fly and has the ozone layer. 
then comes the mesosphere ionosphere and finally the thermosphere which is the topmost layer the atmosphere receives heat from the sun by solar radiation and loses heat by earth's radiation in this way a balance is maintained the earth's atmosphere is made up of life supporting gases like nitrogen oxygen and carbon dioxide other gases include helium and argon ozone present in the earth's atmosphere absorbs harmful ultraviolet rays of the sun the atmosphere also prevents loss of heat from earth's surface and helps to keep the earth warm well now jumping on to the third factor which makes the earth unique is water on earth we all must be knowing that earth is a watery planet with 70% of the earth's surface being covered by water distribution of water is responsible for moderating the climate and surface condition of the earth water from seas rivers and lakes evaporates into the atmosphere where it condenses and falls back as precipitation as you can see on your screens the water cycle comes into being this way most of the water on land flows back to the oceans thus water moves in a continuous cycle the hydrological cycle or the water cycle there is a proper balance between evaporation condensation precipitation without which life would not be possible well let's move on to the fourth factor which makes earth a unique planet that is the solid crust or the lithosphere due to the weathering of rocks the surface of the earth has been formed which provides soil layer which is essential for supporting plant life soil also provides various nutrients necessary for the growth of plants which in turn supports all forms of animal life directly or indirectly well that was it for lithosphere now coming on to the fifth factor that makes earth a unique planet which is the biosphere the biosphere is a narrow realm of contact and interaction between the atmosphere lithosphere and hydrosphere life exists within the junction of these three realms biosphere is a thin layer of approximately 15 kilometers from the deepest ocean trench to the highest mountain peak at ground level it extends to a depth of just 3 meters below and in ocean waters about 200 meters deep where marine and fresh water life is found within the biosphere life is found chiefly in two forms the plant kingdom and the animal kingdom well coming on to an end let us get to know about yet another factor which makes earth a unique planet and that is the nutrition cycle the nutrition cycle represents a relationship between the living and the non living things in our environment it shows the interdependence of all living things on earth it operates through the food chain and other processes like photosynthesis transpiration respiration etc the living things are divided into producers consumers and decomposers plants are the producers of food through a process called photosynthesis earth has its origin from here then there are categories of consumers that is the herbivores and the carnivores who live on the producers at the top of all is man who can modify his own environment and create changes at the bottom or in the middle level of the food chain well that would be all from my side thank you and have a nice day 